Good morning, and thank you for joining us for the Sintero Forever Dublin presentation on AARP's Home Fit, presented by Deborah Hall and Veronica Carter. My name is Beth Baker, and I'm the Aging in Place Navigator for the City of Dublin. Making our homes safe and functional as we age in place is so relevant as we navigate the changes in our body and abilities over time. All participants will be emailed a PDF copy of the most recent AARP Home Fit Guide, which will be referenced in this presentation. I do wish to inform you that this presentation will be recorded and archived, so if you choose not to have your image recorded, please cancel the video function at the bottom left of your screen. Questions are encouraged, but we ask that you utilize the chat function so that the presentation may flow. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speakers today. Deborah Hall is a volunteer for, with AARP Ohio and is a member of their Speakers Bureau, where she is a facilitator for AAP, AARP's Fraud Watch Network, Prepare to Care and Home Fit programs. She is a retired Senior Human Resources Manager with degrees from Kentucky University and a master's from Virginia State University. She enjoys spending time with her family, traveling and reading. Veronica Carter retired as a senior policy analyst from the Small Business Self-Employment Division of the Internal Revenue Service. After a 40-year career, Veronica began volunteering for AARP as a representative at community events prepared tax returns for the AARP tax aid, and facilitated fraud watch and prepare to care workshops. She is a graduate of, Mer graduate of Maryhurst University, where she received degrees in business management, finance, and accounting. Please welcome both Deborah Hall and Veronica Carter as they present AARP's Home Fit Program, making homes safe and livable for all. Deborah. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Um, we are so delighted to be here with you today to share with you uh, AARP's Home Fit program. And so the first thing I'm going to do is um, bring up the slide pre presentation. And while I'm doing that, I also want to say that we have with us today Garrett McLeese, who is an occupational therapist who is also um, working with us and um, may share a few things with us as we um, go through today's program. Can everyone see the slide? Yes. Yes. Great. Yes. So today we'll be talking to you about how to make your home fit. One way to make a home more livable for people of all ages is to incorporate design principles and products that are adaptable, safe, and easy to use. Such smartly designed features are attractive, stylish, and come at all price points. This AARP Home Fit Workshop will show you how that's possible. Also today, we will refer to AARP's Home Fit Guide. Imagine if a home could be suitable for any resident of any age or physical ability, allowing older adults who want to live independently despite changing abilities or evolving needs to do just that. The AARP Home Fit Guide and presentation were created to help people live safely and comfortably in their homes by enabling where they live to be a lifelong home suitable for themselves and others in their household, no matter a person's age or life stage. By the end of today's presentation, you will be able to one, recognize how a home can be modified to support your changing needs and lifestyle at any age. Second, you'll be able to determine which modifications are important for maintaining the, life, maintaining the lifestyle that you desire. And then finally, we, you will be able to distinguish between modifications that are DIY, do-it-yourself, and those that are best left 
to a profession. Today's presentation is based on AARP's Home Fit Guide, which is a 36 page fully illustrated guide which provides more than 100 tips or suggestions for your home. Now, as we go through the presentation, when we talk about a home, it is not just a house, but a home is anywhere you live. So it can be your house, it can be an apartment, a condo, or a mobile home. The guide provides suggestions for every room in the home, including entrances and exits, the kitchen, the bathroom, and more. These solutions range from simple do-it-yourself fixes to improvements requiring skilled expertise. Many modifications in this presentation have been labeled as quick fix, which will allow you to begin planning your own home modification. Those quick fix modifications will be noted on the screen with a green star. A complete listing of these classifications can be found on page 32 and 33 of the Home Fit Guide. Now, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word home? So I want you to think about that for a few minutes. And if you like, you can write your response in the chat. Or is there anyone who would be willing to share out loud? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word chat, I'm home? Anyone? Well, for many of us, it's the personal touches that we make that change a house into a home. It's, um, it's about our memories, the feeling of comfort, family photos, good times, a place where we feel calm and secure. It's understandable then. That's why many of us want to stay in our homes as we age. On just a moment here, it's not. There we go. The modifications that we will present today were varying cost and difficulty level. However, when you consider that per month, private duty home health aids can cost around $4,385, or adult daycare outside the home runs around $1,625 and then nursing home care averages around $7,513 for a semi-private room per month, you will see that many of these changes may be more economical and the work done to remain in your home are worth the effort. Now that we've had a brief conversation about our homes and why staying in them, can certainly be worth the cost and effort. Let's talk about universal design. Universal design may sound technical, but it refers to a very simple concept. Universal design is an approach to designing products and environments to accommodate all people, including those with physical, cognitive, or sensory impairments. It's a lot, it, along with livability, and visit ability is the basis for the home fit guide in our conversation today. When thinking about how to modify your home, think about additions that could accommodate all people regardless of ability. Making modifications that are low maintenance and energy efficient can improve the livability of a house. Making modifications so that anyone who uses a wheelchair or other mobility devices can visit, improves the visit ability of a home. These include things such as one-step entrances, wider doorways, or maybe even a half bath on the main floor. Remember homes that are universally designed can be used by all people for a lifetime even if they have trouble with stairs, even if it's a toddler in a stroller, even if 
if it's an aunt with a walker. Everyone can live and visit safely and comfortably. So now um, Veronica is going to share some additional information with them. I'm going to turn it over to her. Okay, next slide. Let's begin with the exterior. Whether a residence is a home, um, back one, one slide. Whether the residence is a home or an apartment, its exterior doorway should allow a smooth transition. Many homes have entrance steps which can make the home inaccessible to a person who uses a wheelchair, relies on crutches, or has difficulties climbing stairs. The ideal is for all homes to have at least one step exterior doorway. If step-free access isn't possible for the front of the home, back door, or door located in the garage, substitution. Another solution is a ramp. Next slide. Uh, it's Oh, it's taken in a, there we go. Okay. The best adjustment to an entryway is of a zero step entrance. Zero step entrances are accessible to all people, whereas raised entryways and steps may be a challenge for those with mobility limitations. Really, a home should have at least one zero step entry. It is important to keep in mind that a zero step entrance does not have to be created for the front door. It can also be a side or garage entry door. They can also be created with landscape pathways as shown on this picture here. Using landscaping to create a zero step entrance a landscape arc. Keep in mind that you will have to determine whether or not it is a zero step entrance or landscaping and size of the yard. You want to consult with the contractor or occupational therapist to discuss your options. Next slide. Reason it's I'm hitting it to turn to go to the next slide, and it's not doing that. Well, while you are working on the transition, I'll just interject and say, uh, reiterating what Veronica said, um, a lot of folks, when they hear zero-step entry or ramp, get concerned that um, it's going to be difficult to install that, or they don't like the way the ramp or zero-step entry looks on the front of their house. So I just wanna reiterate that um, you can take a look at other doorways on the side or back of the home and that landscaping can make it um, look, you know, look nice and less medical and it can still be helpful to you and others who visit. Thank you, Garrett. You're welcome. When a zero step entryway cannot be achieved, there are ways to make steps safer for all. Steps need to be well lit, free from obstructions and have railings on both sides. The railing should extend past the last step to ensure a safe transition for all people. Additionally, where space allows, steps can be adapted into walker steps, which have deep treads and short risers. Walker steps are generally 22 and four inches wide. And this design allows those who use a walker or cane to easily and safely utilize steps and can be a good alternative to ramps, which we will discuss in coming slides. When a zero step entryway cannot be achieved, a ramp can be added and ramps can be a permanent or temporary fixture to a home. Permanent ramps can be added to entrances by a contractor or other professional, whereas temporary ramps are a good solution for renters, for visitors, and for those who do not wish to permanently modify their homes. 
if you have a relatively short step up in, in your entryway to overcome, you can also consider a threshold ramp, which is an inexpensive install solution. The for formula for ramping is one foot of ramp is needed for each inch of elevation. So for example, a 12 inches of elevation equals 12 feet of ramp. Switchbacks are helpful and may even be required, but when the available space cannot accommodate the length of the ramp or when ramp's length would exceed 15 feet, therefore even a piece of property that could accommodate a 20 foot ramp may need to have switchbacks. And keep in mind that a home ramp doesn't need to be at the front door. It can lead to any suitable door, including one inside a garage, which provides a bonus of protection from incremental weather. And there are many considerations when incorporating a ramp into your entrance. So it is best to consult with a professional for this. And ramps are discussed in detail on page 28 of the Home Fit Guide. Next slide, okay. This is just a quick reminder to take note on the green stars on this slide and those that follow. There are indications that the labeled items are quick fixes. You'll be asked to choose two of these quick fixes to place on your to-do list to help you get started making your home home fit. Now that we've covered various ways to modify the exterior access for safety, let's talk about some lighting. Outdoor lighting is a must for safety reasons. You want to make sure at least one entryway is at a height that does not require someone to be on a ladder to change the bulb to make maintenance doable for, by anyone. You should also consider adding pathway lighting that leads to the front entryway that will allow visitors and delivery people to safely approach the home after dark. And again, that's a quick fix. Prominently displaying your address numbers helps delivery people and first resp responders find your home. Illuminated numbers or numbers made of a shiny, reflective, or glow-in-the-dark material are the most invisible at night. And again, this is a quick fix. Now let's move on to discuss entryways. Whether a residence is a house or an apartment, its exterior doorways should allow a smooth transition into and out of the property. Safety is of the utmost importance. Want is to fall. You could even consider adding an attractive grab bar at each of your entrances, and you will be surprised at how many people use this. When planning accessible entryways, the most important consideration is size. Specifically, the width of a doorway opening should be at least 32 inches to allow for a wheelchair to pass through and the height at least 80 inches. When possible, door thresholds should be less than three quarters of an inch. If they are not, use the suggestions presented earlier um, and they're on page 28 to 29 of the Home Fit Guide for Modifications. And they should be beveled when possible to allow for ease of navigation. When the measurement is just an inch or so too small, swing clear hinges can provide the needed space. These hinges actually make the door opening as wide as possible by swinging the door completely clear of the opening. And to see how these hinges work, um, you can search online for swing clear, wide throw, or offset hinges. If a door doesn't have a glass panel, I'm sorry, was there a question or comment? Okay. If a door doesn't have a glass panel and there isn't a window nearby, a peephole can help residents see who's outside before opening the door. A video doorbell can often be paired with the smartphone app, enabling a door to be answered remotely and a visitor identified whether or not anyone is home. A level style door handle is easier to use than a doorknob 
or thumb latch handle for those with mobility concerns or full hands. Also, a doorknob lock isn't the best choice for an exterior door. The lock can too easily and unintentionally be, be pressed or turned, resulting in someone being accidentally locked out of the home. A higher tech solution for an entryway door is a digital door lock. It eliminates having to find or fumble with the door key. A battery powered or hardwired digital door lock can be opened by using a code or a fingerprint. Some devices also work with a key, while others provide a way to lock and unlock a door by a smartphone app or remote control. Now I'm gonna turn it back over to Deborah to talk about the kitchen. Regardless of how many rooms, does someone have something to say? Regardless of how many rooms a home has, residents and guests tend to congregate in the kitchen. But even the most welcoming kitchen has its hazards. Fires, spills, trips, and drops can cause injuries and home damage. Home fitting intervention can make the kitchen safer and easier to use for every diner, visitor, and cook. Since your desire and need to cook may change throughout your life, consider ways that you could change the way that certain kitchen features work for you. For example, standing at the counter to prepare food may be too taxing. So instead, you may want to move to a kitchen table or lower counter space. Pull out counter extensions and other off-the-shelf options are also available to integrate with your countertop. Modifying your current spaces so you don't have to redo the entire kitchen is a cost-effective way to extend the lifespan of your kitchen design. Start by making some simple modifications for safe and ease of use. And eventually, if you are considering a remodel, there are many options for changing the layout and design of your kitchen that can expand the useful lifespan. It's useful lifespan. If you're going to update your kitchen, consider the universal design concepts that will allow for the greatest kitchen access as you age. There are many things to consider when you look at making a kitchen more accessible. And those range from quicker fixes to harder remodels that require a professional's help. Some quicker fixes for the kitchen includes reorienting adjustable lighting and adding stick on under cabinet lighting to shine more light on commonly used workspaces. Modifications that require the help of a professional include cabinet changes. Since frequently used items are best stored between hip and shoulder height, adding lower level cabinets with pull out shelves and extra shelving for storing items of different height makes them easier for people to access. Other professional renovations could include open shelving. That makes items easier to see, reach, and then replace after they've been used. And then adding in drawers of various depths, you know, maximizing space and storage of various items. Handles and hardware can be relatively easy to modify, but they may require the help of a professional in some instances. First, let's look at handles on existing cabinets. These shaped handles are draw pull, like the ones pictured, are easier to grab as opposed to knobs. And then lever style light touch are sensory process are both easier to use and more sanitary than the ones with the turnstile knob or handle. 
When considering your appliances, there are many options with helpful features to choose from. There are also a few features to be mindful of when considering safety and convenience. Although placing the microwave above the oven might be a space saver, it can be dangerous. Lifting and lowering heavy and often hot cookware is difficult and it can result in spills or injuries. So a countertop microwave oven or maybe one built in at that height is safer and easier to access. When thinking about stoves, consider models that have the controls at the front of the unit to save users from having to reach over hot burn burners and pots. Now, if your existing stove has the controls at the back of the unit, just be vigilant about safety. Watch out for loose clothing and exposed skin. Also, colored or backlit controls on a stove are the easiest to read and, and controls that can be locked, covered, or removed are useful if children live or visit the home frequently. The top oven in a double range can be used to prepare small meals and the height is useful if bending and lifting is difficult. Drawer style appliances such as the picture refrigerator, range, and double drawer dishwasher are more expensive than the single door swing open models. However, the ease of use and the energy savings can be worth the cost. A French door refrigerator opens in the middle, which makes it easier to see and reach what's inside. You can find suggestions on modifications to lighting, flooring, and more, again, in the Home Fit Guide, and that's found on pages 8 through 10. So let's talk about the bathroom, um, which is another area of the house that um, merits additional consideration when you're thinking about making your home fit. Sometimes more attention is paid to how a bathroom is decorated than to, to the safety of the space. Water on a bathroom floor is a slipping hazard and often an invisible one. Falling in a bathroom is painful and potentially life-threatening because of the many hard surfaces, the floor, the toilet, the countertop, the tub. All things considered, you may be surprised just how nice many modern bathroom safety and convenience features may look, look in your existing space. When considering making changes to your bathroom, remember to keep in mind ease of use and safety. It's a good idea to go over each component of the bathroom as you decide which tips you will incorporate into your bathroom. So in the shower area, there are many options available when someone has mobility limitations. And many of these options are temporary and very cost effective. First, there's the permanent or portable shower bench or a transfer chair. Shower seating is a relaxing, safety feature for all people. Additionally, an adjustable height handheld shower head makes the shower customizable for users of different heights and ability. And so on the um, slide there, the shower bench is in the bottom right corner. Although it's harder to do that requires the assistance of a professional, it's important to keep in mind that a wide doorless shower with a zero step entry is accessible for all, including wheelchair users and others with a disability or anyone who needs another person's assistance. Zero step showers inserts are available from the big box stores. And so I'm talking about places like Lowe's, um, Home Depot, Menards. Similarly, 
suitable options include full swing shower doors or the use of a shower curtain or a partial wall to cover the opening. Next, let's talk about the toilet. And that's a comfortable height toilet is the best option for wheelchair users, but not necessarily for someone who is short in stature and for children. If there is a household where one person could greatly benefit from the comfort height toilet and one person for whom the comfort height toilet would be detrimental, you could consider having one bathroom with the regular toilet and then one with a comfort height toilet. If you need to add height to an existing toilet, consider a toilet-based rise. A toilet-based rise is a base for an existing toilet that adds 3.5 inches in height to an existing toilet. These usually cost a little less than $100. And an example is pictured here um, in the bottom left corner. You see the base of the toilet featured on this slide. And you see it's kind of highlighted in, the, in that circle. So they've added a base to that toilet. And then finally, a commode chair is, is the least expensive option for helping someone get on and off the toilet. And that's up in the top left-hand corner of the slide. They are often used by people for temporary situations or when remodeling is not an option. This device sits right on top of the toilet, raises the height of the toilet, and provides arm support without needing any structure changes at all. These are often available again for around $50. I know some of us may have experienced sliding on a wet, slippery floor, and that's why we want mm -hmm. to ensure that the bathroom includes grab or assist bars for someone to hold on to when they feel unstable. There are many readily available high quality grab bars that are integrated into common bathroom features as indicated on the slide, such as toilet paper roll holders and soap dishes. The correct installation of grab or assist bars is vitally important for safety. They should be installed in supportive blocking, which is best done by a professional. If they are not secured correctly, they can pull away from the wall when someone puts their full weight on them. Keep in mind that there are products available or being sold that are unsafe. Um, they're being sold as grab or assist bars, but they use a clamp or suction cup to secure them to the wall are tough. These should not be used. Research has indicated that grab or assist bars are safest when they are horizontal to the floor rather than vertical or diagonal. And so when we talk about horizontal, that's the example that's there on the slide. Um, Garrett, do you have anything you want, might wanna add about the bathroom? You shared some great information, and I will just reiterate about the grab bars um, that they come in many different designs and they can match the other fixtures in your bathroom. If you have gold fixtures for your sink and your tub, then you can look for that finish on the grab bar. If you have silver, you can look for silver. If you have a certain design, um, they create them in a way that doesn't look medical, that can look good in your bathroom and still provide you safety. Um, so I think that's important to note, as well as the suction cup grab bars are not designed to hold the full weight of a person. So they should really, if they are used, should only be used for planning purposes with a professional to help lay out where you're gonna install a permanent one, but they shouldn't be used to try to hold your weight. Um, 
And if there are any questions at the end about bathroom or any of the equipment that was mentioned in the prior slide, as an OT, I have a lot of experience working with folks on home modifications and how to use this equipment. So I can add more later. Um, I want to respect the flow and the pace of this, but I'm happy to help with any questions. Thank you, Garrett. You're welcome. So, so now I'll turn it over to Veronica. Um, it looks like there was one question um, regarding why the horizontal bar is better. If okay. Eric could yeah. speak to that. I will go ahead and address that. So as, as it was mentioned, horizontal, there's been research about that, um, which says that that's safer than vertical or at an angle. Um, and it is really about the way that those bars are used when, you, when they're typically in the shower. Um, you're going to have a lot of surface area horizontally. Oh. You can reach it um, from a more universal design perspective while standing or seated. Whereas when it's vertical, it doesn't cover but one section where you're standing. And if you step a foot back or a foot forward, you don't have the same support as if that grab bar was horizontal across the entire length of the tub. Um, there are some situations next to the tub if you're using one to hold on to where the wall might be small and might not accommodate a horizontal bar. Um, and in those cases, it's best to have a professional take a look at your specific situation to advise you on where these should be appropriately installed. Um, because like, like I said, it's more the reason is about the surface area and the ability to use it from that certain um, universal design height perspective. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you, Garrett. You're welcome. Okay, now, finally, we're gonna turn our attention to some other areas in the home. Universal design for living spaces focuses on safety and livability, but also visit ability. Having guests to our home sometimes bring to the light the quick fixes and harder to do's that we may need to ensure our living space is usable by all people. Think about a time that you had a lot of family over. Everyone is gathered in the living room and depending on, there may be some things that you need. Small children may knock into the edge of the furniture, trip over electrical cords, or pull on draperies or window blinds. Family with mobility issues might not fit between the couch and the coffee table, or they may not be able to get out of a low chair. Those are the kinds of things we'll discuss on the next slide, and you can read more about it in the Home Fit Guide on pages 12-15. Think of a situation we described on the previous slide. Then think about your own home. What would you need to change to ensure your safety and the safety of all of your guests? A few common fixes are, always anchor tall furnishing, furnishings to the wall to prevent tripping. Secure exposed cords to the floor by using an electrical cord approved adhesive or covering. Check the cord regularly to ensure there's no fraying or breakages, and this is a quick fix. Provide about two feet of space, of clear space between the coffee table and ottoman and the couch so people have room to maneuver while sitting down and getting up. Avoid furniture with sharp corners, and always keep window treatment cords to prevent entanglement. Secure area rugs to the floor with non-slip mats or double-sided tape. And again, that's a quick fix. And these changes are good for everyone, not just visitors, when made throughout the home. Next, let's talk about the lighting and electrical in the living spaces. Most of these changes, but not all, would need to be completed by a professional. 
Another quick, one easy thing to do is to use natural light during the day by opening blinds and curtains to brighten the room. Another quick fix is to use a plug-in nightlight and unused outlets throughout the home. Battery operated dust to dawn or motion sensor nightlights in hallways and near steps and staircases are also simple safety solutions in which are quick fixes. Additionally, you may want to consider some additional improvements that generally require professional assistance. The ideal height for switches is roughly three to four feet from the floor. Rocker style switches, which are pictured, um, make turning lights off and on very easy. Also consider, consider switches near the doorways of living spaces that turn on a ceiling fixture so that occupants do not, do not need to enter a darkened room. Stairway and hallway lights off and on switches at both ends of the hall and at the top and bottom of the stairs. Light switches that glow in the dark are especially helpful in those areas. And consider hanging wall sconce lights fixtures with an adjustable arm next to each side of the bed for a reading light at night. When placing furniture in the hallway, maintain at least 36 inches of passing space so people can use the corridor without knocking into or being blocked by furnishings. Stairways need to be well lit and have railings on both sides, which allows someone to use his or her cane effectively going both up and down. One easy quick fix idea is to install motion sensor night lights. The safest surface and covering for steps is a tightly woven low pile carpet with thin padding. You can use contrast colors or patterns to help differentiate each step from the tread of the next. And you wanna secure carpet runners with permanent tacking. If stairs are uncarpeted, Always make sure they have a non-slip surface, such as adhesive strips or a securely placed rubber thread. These are a quick fix. And stairs with open back should have risers covers installed for safety. And as mentioned earlier, handrails should extend past the bottom step for safety. When single story living is needed, but not possible, a chair, a stair chair lift can be a practical and safe mobility solution. Stair chair lifts should be installed by a professional. Chair stair lifts aren't inexpensive, but they can be a better and more affordable choice than relocating. And you may be surprised to find out about all the options that are available for various types of staircases. The cost will increase if you require a custom chairlift or if your stairs are curved. Remember that stair chairlifts can be purchased, used, and can greatly reduce the price. I will just add real quick on the stair and chairlifts that they should be installed by a professional and you should um, receive some advice or training on how to use them as well before you attempt to use them. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you. The best location for a laundry room or area is near the rooms where clothing is put on and taken off. However, in most homes, especially some of the older ones, that's not possible. If access is the issue, laundry facilities can be moved to the main floor. A chairlift can be installed or one can invest in a laundry service. Quick fixes for the laundry space include investing in a laundry basket with wheels as shown in the illustration or by using a foldable shopping cart. 
These items are also ideally suited to apartment or condo buildings where laundry machines are located outside of the home. When purchasing a new washer or dryer, consider the style options uh, and which door placement top or front can be easiest to use. Stack units save space, but can be difficult for some users to reach. If bending to load or empty a front load washer or dryer is difficult, the units can be placed on a platform. And the models sold by appliance manufacturers often include storage drawers underneath. Finally, there are washer dryer combos available. This is a washer dryer combined in a single washer size unit containing a front loading washer as well as a condensing condenser dryer. And you want to consult with an appliance specialist about the best option for you. I'm going to turn it back over to Deborah. Um, so if you remember at the beginning of our presentation today, we talked about um, short-term and long-term fixes. And so just wondering if anyone has, after going through the presentation, has been able to identify maybe two quick fixes that you can tackle in your home over the next three months. And if anyone wants to share, feel free to do so. You can do it in the chat if you want to speak out. If you've identified maybe two quick fixes. Anyone? Uh -huh. I'm having some remodeling done to my bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And I did have the grab bars, <clears throat> excuse me, installed in, <clears throat> excuse me, in my shower and in, in one of the other bathrooms. <clears throat> but, um, and it's, it's kind of horizontal. It is horizontal, but it curves up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was good because if someone is tall for, for children in the bathtub, they could grab onto the lower part if they need to. But also, I like this idea, and I'm not sure. Now, I have a digital lock on my garage door, but I had never thought about it for the front door. And I'm kind of wondering how that will work. And I know I couldn't do it, but uh, that doesn't seem as though it would be a really difficult thing to have done. And, but the other thing I like the idea of and is, uh, is two other things really. Having a railing on the east side, because I have one on one side of my stairs, but not on the other. And then this idea of having the railings on your steps going up, because I don't have railings outside. So I, I like that too. I don't know. Some of these things I know I can't do, but they don't seem to be like they're, they're these gigantic, you know, really enormous projects. So, but one, one thing I was concerned about, I think that would be difficult is uh, the one, no step entry. I think that would be kind of hard to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. One step or one step. Right. Are you talking about for your front door? Yeah. 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 I just well, wanted you. to share a couple. Um, the I do have a combination door lock on my front door, and it fits into the deadbolt spot. So if you have a deadbolt spot. You can still have a key underneath it, but uh, the, that's where the digital one fits. It was a, a real quick uh, installation by a professional, mm -hmm. um, but it is really nice, especially if I go for a walk and I don't carry yeah. keys. Right. Now, so did, I like did, that. Was that yeah. a locksmith who did that, a locksmith or some other professional? A home improvement. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. I also have one. Um... I installed it myself, but that's because I knew how to do it. But um, I think that a <clears throat> any kind of handyman type handyman. Of person can do a job like that. Um, it is basically just replacing the deadbolt lock with one that has a combination. And the one that I have um, has the combination and the keyhole with it. So you get a key 
-hmm. and you have the combination in the event that for whatever reason the electrical part wasn't working you would still be able to use the key but um like beth was saying i like it because um we have three kids here and sometimes we have our hands full getting in and out of the door and it's it's a lot it saves time uh, for even those without issues with their hands um, that might have trouble manipulating a key um, it's easier to press the buttons and unlock it that way the other modification i made this year uh, was the door levers instead of the door knobs yeah that was that has changed my life um i had a door that stuck a lot, um, maybe due to humidity or freeze and thaw on my outside door. And that, that lever has just changed my life. So if you do anything in your home, I would change the door knobs all to levers. And uh, it's been great. Right, and Thank do you. the same for the, um, and the, that's great. And do the same to take a look at the sinks as well, because it has the same effect to do a lever on the bathroom, kitchen sink, instead of the knobs there too. Mm -hmm. I had senior options to evaluate my home and they came and uh, put railings in my bathtub and shower. And it was a tremendous help for me. And also I had one rail coming down my steps from upstairs they put a second railing up and also they put up railing on my front porch going down the steps. The other thing that I would mention uh, just as an idea to those wishing uh, for their laundry facilities to be on one floor I have a friend who was very successful in putting a stackable washer and dryer in a closet, in a closet on the first floor. Mm -hmm. if, if the water source is near a, a, a bathroom in a closet, you could take that closet space and make a washer dryer hookup. It was quite successful. Good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you for sharing that, Beth. That was good. Thank you, everyone. Does anyone else have anything, any comments? Great discussion. Well, we'll appreciate that so much. Good idea. Um, remember that you can also use your home fit guide that can help you choose what um, future plan modifications you may want to make. So as we kind of wrap things up for today, just want to let you know AARP has a wealth of information and resources for residents. Um, you can visit aarp.org slash livable community for more information um, about home maintenance. And also remember you can revisit um, if you want specific information about what we talked about today, um, our home fit guide, and that's available at aarp.org slash home fit. And here's one other thing I want to add. I want to let you know that AARP has created a home fit app. It is available on the Apple App Store. And this app uses images, image recognition to identify design elements and appliances like refrigerators sinks and stairs and then it then employs I'm gonna get a little try to get a little scientific here um, it employs augmented reality to provide additional information with specific to do's to make a home more comfortable and safe so I tried it in my kitchen so basically you know I uh, downloaded the app and then took the app and then it had you open it up you know like you open up to take a picture and then I just scanned my kitchen, uh, you know, and then it came back and gave me some suggestions on some quick fixes that I could do. So if you're interested in the um, HomeFit app, you can go out to the Apple Book, um, Apple Store, App Store, and then pull that and download that app. Okay. And if you are concerned about maintenance, 
please make sure to take a look at the Here to Stay guide that's available free through AARP's foundation. So here you can take a self-assessment and search a directory for free and low-cost programs and services near you. You can also get tips, checklists, worksheets, and more to help you plan, prioritize, and keep your home maintenance routine on track. And so that is at aarpfoundation.org slash here to stay. So again, that's aarpfoundation.org slash here to stay. And then also, great resources. We've had the benefit of, of that today. Our occupational therapists, which Garrett is, occupational therapists and physical therapists are professionals that can be a great resource. These professionals understand, they have the experience, so they know about the needs that they're keeping aging um, individuals, and they can help find the um, help you find solutions. And so. The American Occupational Therapy Association, they're available if you want more information, it's AOTA.org. And then you visit the Patients and Clients section. And then also another great resource, a certified agent in place specialist. And again, these individuals, as the title says, have expertise and knowledge and experience they're able to really recognize the needs of older adult population and have a lot of experience about aging in place modification and common remodeling projects. And so they too are a helpful resource. And then also we have partnered with the National Association of Home Builders, NAHB.org. And you can search for certified aging in place specialists. And I think that's really important. And I think um, Garrett, him and I have kind of had this conversation. So when you're looking for um, someone to help you do your remodeling, when you're looking for someone to help you do those modifications, you may want to ask see whether or not they are certified in um, aging and being a, a, an agent in place specialist, as opposed to just a, a general contractor, right? Because there are specific things that are important when you're looking at putting in these types of modifications like we discussed earlier. And so we're going to wrap it up before we conclude. Does anyone have any more questions or comments? Any questions? No more comments or questions in the chat. Okay. Thank you, Sam. I'll just reiterate about the certified aging in place specialists and how important it is to work with um, then if there's one available in your area, you can search them on their website, NAHB for Certified Aging in Place Specialists, um, because especially for the larger remodels, you're going to want to make sure they're certified for that um, to avoid the headache of having the job done incorrectly or almost correctly. So that's a great resource, and the Home Fit Guide is as well. I've seen it and looked through it, and I'm really impressed with everything that's in there. So that is OT. I've got an OT stamp of approval from me. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and so as we conclude, we just want to say that, you know, today we talked about the perks of staying in your home. We looked at when we're talking about making modifications to our home, we want to focus on that universal design, which makes it accessible for all people. We kind of took a mini tour through your house, looking at the different, um, you know, looking at entryways and looking at different rooms, like the kitchen and the bathroom to kind of, um, you know, relate that to the home fit guide. And then finally, just again, want to remind you that you can get, you can order, view, and or download the free 36 page home fit guide at aarp.org slash home fit. AARP, we thank you to um, Beth and um, Dublin Forever for the invitation to join you today. Thank you, Garrett, for your sharing your expertise. Um, and that concludes our presentation. Well, and thank you so much, Deborah and uh, Veronica and Garrett. I am so impressed with AARP's investment that they have 
spearheaded the idea that you can stay in your home with very simple modifications. I'm just thrilled to tell um, those that we do are partnering with Ohio Health with their OT department. Next week, uh, we will have an occupational therapist uh, like Garrett. Um, Chris Parrish will be speaking from Ohio Health on how their program is getting occupational therapists in the home, assessing each individual home, and then making res uh, recommendations to certified uh, contractors. Uh, so it's a whole program that Ohio Health is uh, develop it, or developed and developing. Um, and I'm just thrilled, as I said, uh, for AARP to take such an uh, investment in the community and making homes fit and just to kind of see how we can do things at a very modest cost uh, that can make big changes. So thank you again so much for your time, uh, your presentation, and I hope that we can bring maybe some other AA of RP. Uh, I'd like fraud prevention and some of the other things that we can bring to Forever Dublin. So we'll be in touch and uh, have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye.